What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans actions, spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color, playing as Orionis, who's from the DoD clan, his name is Fox, his partners today in the teal color playing as Ra, his name is Joe, and in the blue color in the Odin race, his name is back in action, also known as a Sheltie. Their opponents today in the F2, with the F2 clan, uh, in the green color playing as Orionis is a Squash, Spartans today in the yellow color playing as Zeus is player and in the purple color playing as Loki is gold lion. The map is Alfheim and we have a pause by Deity Fox so he can do all the microing in the early game that you need to do as Aranos. Need to like click everywhere with this scout, click shift click everywhere with this scout, and shift click everywhere with this scout. Super important to get that stuff down, you know. Otherwise, like, you're just at a disadvantage, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you can see you'll, there'll be a bunch of, like, queued up actions. Would have preferred pausing to just, like, block out everything so you can't, like, do the kind of pause buffering or whatever. But, obviously, Fox just had to fix something up there, so it's totally fine. Um, I'm not sure if this is some sort of training match or if it's, like, part of a tournament or... Or something like that. Uh, but this is Shoutcast Sunday. We've got DOD versus F2. This was, I think this was the final of the uh, last RTSL. Maybe some different names were here. But still, some really high quality matches to come. With some of the best Asian mythology players currently playing the game. We've got Flagstone of Buhan over here. We've got a Ship of Fingernails. And is this lag me? Surely it's not. We can back out and uh, and see what's going on. Nothing like more different than usual. I don't think. Anyways. <laughs> um, what are we going to see here? That's sort of an interesting team comp here from, uh, from both teams it looks like. One Norse. One Greek. Well, actually, this came comp from F two is pretty, pretty, pretty standard. You have um, you have Zeus who's pretty mobile with Centaur and Hippocon. You've got Aranus who's obviously very mobile with the movement speed buff, and you have Loki who's very mobile with Hall of Fame's Hursa. So we're gonna be able to see a lot of raiding, a lot of maybe fast taking and all that other stuff. Thank you so much for the follow, Mythic Slayer number one. Appreciate that one, my friend. Um. But yeah, you're gonna be able to see a lot of a lot of mobility with the uh, with these with these guys over here on the DoD clan. Though we have Odin, who uh, is is Norse, so in that regard, you have quite a bit of mobility. But Odin not as fast really as Loki, and doesn't have as much potency with the fast teching either. So you have to kind of play more defensive, go for like frost play or Njord. You could make Njord pushes or something like that. But generally speaking, you're kind of aiming for fast mythic ages into ragnarok well, not a fast mythic age but fast boom like hard boom into a ragnarok as your finishing blow you also have ra here he's one of the most uh one of the hardest gods to kind of play uh, a mobility game with because can't really make chariot arches because everything dodges it and everything just runs away from the chariot arches so you kind of have to make camelry which aren't the strongest units in order to chase around your opponent so we'll see what happens there. But the other thing is with Ra is because Ra is such a strong booming god, if your opponents don't do enough damage to your allies or you, uh, Ra just skyrockets ahead and um, can really kind of do whatever he wants in order to take the game wherever he wants to take it just because of how strong the economy can be. Seeing a super fast temple here with the empowerment from the Pharaoh. Check out Joe's economy. He's not really able to advance just yet. He's moving his villages around. So I was a bit to, uh, to gather here. If we check out all these things, we've got a temple coming up with Gold Lion. Are we seeing standard play from our squash fight? No, we're going to see that second town center coming up very, very early. And we're seeing Fox going through Prometheus. This is interesting here from squash. I don't normally see these fast two town center plays here, especially because there's not a lot of hunt to play with. Uh, so I guess that's what he's playing around with. He sees not that much hunt, so he knows that his opponents can't really uh, do all that much to him, even if they spam the Ulf Sark. It's not going to be as good as it normally would. 
there's some cows here. There's a couple of deer, but all in all, this is a pretty low hunt uh, Alfheim. So Odin, uh, so Shelty's probably not going to be able to make that many units uh, in order to punish this second town center here. So we'll see, we'll see. But we are, we do have some uh, Prometheus coming through. We've got ooh, still no advance time from Joe. It's going to be a late advance, and no. Uh, no monuments here, so interesting, interesting. And we do have Freya coming through for Shelty. No advance time just yet for Player or for um, Squash. We've got Hermes coming through for Player. And we've got Forsetti coming through for Gold Lion. So I've just been a little bit slower than our normal 1v1s. This is kind of normal. Uh, just because I say this, it's normal for team games because the maps are larger. So you can have a little bit more time to play with, so you don't have to advance quite so fast. But Fox is just kind of so far playing very, very standard. He is playing against Loki, so he does have to do that. Fox does capture the armor of Achilles, which just gives you feel like 5% hack armor, or extra hack armor. Well, kind of gives you, yeah, it gives you 5%, yeah. Uh, and we do have, most of the other relics, we've got Blue Crystal Shard here, which everybody knows is a completely useless relic. Just kidding! It's not a useless relic. Aranos gets the full 5% bonus when you get Blue Crystal Shard, so, uh, or from both of the upgrades. So you definitely want to be grabbing that one as Aranos. But it's also useful for Egyptians, and a little bit useful for Norse. Uh, so the way the gathering works is that your villagers basically their gather rate is actually the effective gather rate is actually based on how many times they have to swing their pickaxe or their hand axe uh, and if they swing it uh it doesn't matter if they're giving getting extra bonus um from five percent because it's not going to cut out a most of the time it's not going to cut out an extra pickaxe swing even though they're getting more resources if you dumped it earlier you would get the extra resource but nobody's going to do that um so you you effectively uh, lose out on a little bit of resource there, but sometimes you actually get the complete opposite in, in terms of effective bonus. So for example, uh, I think it's pickaxe. If you have pickaxe as, uh, as Egyptian, you get an effective 10%, I think, extra boost from on your gold or maybe 15% extra boost on your gold. I'm not 100% sure of the math. There's a RTS Sanctuary thread on it and it's super interesting. Uh, so certain situations, uh, actually the big one is like you don't want to get hand axe if you get uh, if you get a blue crystal shard because it only gives you like like an extra three percent or something onto your wood if you have um, hand axe versus blue crystal shard. Um, but yeah, interesting to say the very least. But we are seeing some raids coming in for player here. Going to be trying to target down some of uh, Joe's villages here. No skin of the rhino. Do see second town center is up. Second town center coming up now for Shelty. It's a little bit late. You want to see this town center just a little bit early against a uh, two town center Aranus play. And we are seeing those Mermillo are coming in. Going to try and slow down this town center. And it's actually going to force... Oh no, this is going to be really bad for Shelty here. He's actually going to... He may be going to have to give up on this location here. Turns around, has to fight. And he's going to be trying to get this one back. And fight back. Hit and run, hit and run here. As best as he possibly can. We do see Shockwave is going to come down here. Try and get this town center up. It's getting close. We see him at 2600. The old stuff do get splashed away there. And they're going to be trying to micro a little bit. But uh, it's looking like this town center is not going up in population. We do see Shifting Sands does come down. And he does move them into the base of Joe, you're going to be able to pick off all of those guys in the town center, he's going to come up. So that's going to be one shockwave down, one shifting sands down, and that's going to be a huge thing. Longhouse come up now, and Oxcart coming through with the Dwarf as well. More Dwarves coming out for Shelty, and now we've got some little uh, interesting raids around the back here. I'm not sure if he's looking for any sort of villages, or if he's looking for like a back, uh, a back gold mine or something, or like a back build, side build coming in there. Could be an option. We are seeing a second town center coming up now for Gold Lion super early, and we're seeing a second town center coming up for Player. So we've got two town centers for Joe, two town centers for everyone except for our Oranos player, who should be thinking about getting that second town center already up here. But we are seeing Player's center are really keeping him at bay in terms of that one. If you check out his resources though, he's looking like he wants to go to the next age instead of advancing. We're seeing uh, Squash grabbing that wedge at eye. It's going to allow him to get a few of those. Cheaper myth units when he goes through. Oh, he's going for the uh, the Prometheans with only the eight gold reduction. Not sure about that one. 
probably just save the favor and uh, try and try and get out those satyr as fast as I possibly can would would be an interesting idea. It would be good. And uh, see what happens here. Squash is slowly but surely going to be getting further and further ahead simply because he's had that second town center up for so long. Can even make a move on over to this one if we check out his action here. He's sitting at 110 of 110, getting up more houses, doing more of the good stuff. Seeing some raids coming in with these medium off side with Lone Wanderer. Lone Wanderer does give the extra 0.5 speed, which is gigantic. If you know anything about speed, it's uh, very useful to have it. And we're seeing uh, a little bit of raids coming in. Looks like they're kind of looking for something over here, but there's nothing they can really get. These citizens can simply just jump into manners or jump into the town center and be totally fine. Seeing the attack now coming in for squash with these Prometheans. There's no Hursa here to really help out. So these are Prometheans tanking the arrow, arrow fire as well. Shelby needs to focus fire these arrows onto some sort of the Mermilla wing. He's gonna be moving these medium Ulsarks back in. The Ulsarks are helping out here, but it's looking like this town center is gonna be going down fairly soon. But yet again, town center focusing down those Prometheans first instead of the Mermilla. I'm not sure, they have more hack, more pierce armor, so it's just, Maybe less good. Only two two hack armor more, but like so much more pierce armor. So it's a little significant amount of damage they do lose. And looking like this town center is gonna be going down. If he can just repair it just a little bit faster. Oh super unfortunate that he's gonna be losing that one. Players coming in as well with these Odysseus and the uh Jason are gonna help out just a little bit longer. See that Chaos did come down as well to help out, but that's not gonna be enough. That's gonna be uh it's gonna be not enough to keep the town center from going down, but it's looking like Shelby's gonna be able to survive this attack here at this point. But now Gold Lion is completely in the base of Fox. He's also got access to, um, actually, I might be telling a lie here. Oh, I can't see it. Wait, uh, uh, oh, I can just click on him. What? No, I can't? Okay, never mind. I don't think he's, yeah, he's not in the, he's not in the heroic age just yet. He's retreating out of here. We are seeing heroic age for Fox though with his own satyr. Got so many relics in the back. Feels good to be. Uh, a relic up oh, man he's got a lot of uh bonus bonus for his uh mermillo and stuff like that so that's very very good very very good uh moving forward with this one here we've got these old suck doing their thing but man i've got the second third town center for squash coming up third town center is up for player at the moment so he's just going to be booming out of control these first are just chilling in this corner here for some reason they might want to be why would he be thinking about running around the back here and hurting Joe at this point? Because the thing that's uh, not happened here for Joe is he hasn't been touched. He hasn't been touched at all. And these guys have uh, got to be... DOD's got to be super happy about this. I, at least I haven't seen him get touched. He's going to have so much economy coming through, so many villages. You'll see a, uh, a huge locust coming down onto Gold Lion here. Pick up so many dwarves there. That was gigantic with the Pastus Joss and the Wadget able to really hurt the army or the economy of uh, of gold line and now he's making a beeline for this location here all these dwarves are going to be under pressure from the uh from the myth units of this rock there's also a uh, random bear that's over here fox does build a town center and gold line does go to the heroic cage through bragi this rock not paying attention unfortunately joe he is going to drop these units fairly soon and start attacking this location if he can actually spot it but it looks like he's more worried about what's going on over here does have the uh units attacking uh up in this location and now the uh myth units do drop onto this army they're going to be picking off a bunch of these units wadget and pursuit just deals so much damage they're basically the same as two pursuit just in terms of the damage they do and player does cast ceasefire definitely want to cast i want in order to get this town center up squash needs to grab that town center so that he can continue his economic boom here sitting in the heroic age and he's going through to wait well, he's going through to the heroic age at this point through hyperion no what hyperion yes going through to the heroic age through hyperion and he's going to be looking to go to the mythic age very very fast as well now we got a little bit of downtime here town center grabbing for fox everyone is sitting at three town centers at this point apart from gold lion so that one is good for him it's good for him indeed he's got the market up and he's not going to that next age how are we going not got any food either so he's not going to be able to advance for a very very long time so maybe grabbing this town center is the better option here instead of trying to get to the mythic age we're trying to fight for the mythic age i guess and where are we going from here fortified town centers for squash 
more of those, uh, I think some medium Arctic house, and now it's time to transition into those. We've got all basically mass throwing Axemen against the mass Mermilla, which is huge. We are seeing all oh, gigantic shockwave. That was huge. You need to kind of, I think when you're playing with like throwing Axemen and stuff, you kind of need to, um, like box movement or mixed or like spread formation or something like that so that your uh so that your drawing accident don't do like don't get completely tanked or something like that. You're seeing all of these uh these Momilla get picked off here. Feels good man, feels good. But we do have the medium offstock running around the back of the base. Still trying to take down this location. We've got flaming weapons coming in onto uh, onto Fox, but Joe's already over here to help out. But is this gonna be is this gonna be enough? Looks like the medium of the heavy uh, army of uh, of Fox is gonna be too much here. We've got a bunch of those um, those heavy Mermillard heroes, which are gonna be able to take out so much of what uh, what gold lines got over here. But now we've got the uh, frost coming down. It's gonna be able to help help keep Shelty alive just for a little bit longer. He's actually sitting in a pretty decent position considering he's been getting doubled for so long. For some reason, Joe's just like not really hitting a good position here. He's going through his sires very, very fast. Fortified Town Centers is coming through. Kinda would have liked to see um, Kind of would have maybe like to see Horus here, so he could maybe get something something going there. But with uh, Son of Osiris coming through, he's going to be able to pick off, maybe come over here and help with this Son of Osiris or something else. Son of Osiris over here, he's going to try and push through Gold Lion faster than uh, Player and Squash can push through Shelby, which is probably going to happen here. So a lot of units over here. Got twelve camel cavalry in this rock, going to be looking for something to attack. Can drop them just over the walls. And then run them around here and then start grab picking off that location there if he cho chooses. Probably be faster than um, running the rock around there, but uh can we go on for that one? Town center does fall. Looking like this town center is still alive. All these artists are out. We've got a bunch of those satyrs out as well. And trying to take down all of these units. That feels very, very good, man. Very, very good, but uh they are under this town center fire as well, and these throwing axemen, they're not dying very easily. They're doing fairly decently, especially because he's got frost giants out the tank. But all of these sats here are out, and these guys are going to start falling very, very fast. Need to get some hill forts up, maybe start transitioning into huskals, or or maybe get some raiding cavalry out or something like that. But he's going to dip himself into that town center and try and hang on for as long as he can. Joe grabbing this town center, he's got the son of Osiris to help empower that one as well. With the mummy here taking out. What that Nancy core does fall as well. Helios does come through for squash, so he can simply just jump over here and maybe try and pick off the son of Osiris, but he's got the uh, garrison there as well. Seeing a nice raid here from the cavalry. Gonna be picking off a bunch of these dwarves, but they're just gonna be able to run away onto this uh, onto this town center. Unfortunately, the cavalry do not get a good surround on them. Could probably have picked off all of those if he was paying good attention to that. Still can't believe this town center is still alive and how much Joe is neglecting to help over there and Swash is just getting further and further ahead. We've got the palace up on the front as well so we can start producing some of those fire sites and start sieging away at the town center. Got the raids onto, onto players base here though. This is going to be huge. Picking off a bunch of these villages. Um, this camera are going to be doing work jumping through over those walls. It's absolutely huge. Got Champion Camo here as well. Got the army of Gold Lion chasing them as well with like Battle Boar and, and her. So you don't want to see that because these are going to have Desert Winds. Or well, they have Desert Wind right now. So these are 7.8 speed. Camry, just look at how fast they run away from that unit there. Do you see the Town Center? Does fall now for Shelty, but at what cost is that? All of this, this does fall, but it's like Joe is just going to be going insane at this point check out his economy is just completely crazy he's going to be spamming those uh camel caravans as well moving forward into gold lion's base both players are going to be falling fairly fast so it's basically going to be a uh a testament to whoever can kind of lame the best in their base throw up all of that other stuff oh we even see balder coming through this is going to be huge it's going to drop by so much time right now for uh for for Shelton, and we see this huge raid onto Squash's citizens here. There's so many dead citizens. This is completely gigantic. He didn't have a mana set up over here. Absolute terrible right there. We see Ragnarok coming down as well for Shelty. That's 
absolutely brutal and we even see more of this push in here got all these catapults start sieging away at this location even more of these citizens do fall and joe just goes all right i'm happy with that retreat now we're seeing him move forward or we're seeing shelby move forward with these guys here where is uh the army of of uh where did the army go where's the green army at no idea actually to be honest it's like shelty gonna be moving in we've got some sentry towers getting set up but no watchtowers just yet these powers getting picked up very very fast with the fire giant as well what's the population sitting like so we do have 263 population uh ragnarok here for shelty so it's gonna be moving in and he's going to be able to do so much damage right now. But we do, do see the army of Fire like, coming in to try and stop Joe from uh, keeping this town center up. And I think that the Son of the Cyrus did get picked off there. Maybe this town center is going to get some, um, going to get, uh, going to get saved here. It does manage to get saved by the heroes of Ragnarok. Thank you so much for the follow. I am Spyrus27. Appreciate that one, my friend. We even got fortified. Oh, sorry. Architects coming through to help out even more Son of the Cyrus. Still alive to do... A lot of that damage town center does get taken down and now like Shelfie can grab this town center and also grab this town center and then start trading his units off in order to get his economy back. Uh, he doesn't really have a trade route set up though. So it is going to be a little bit challenging. He doesn't have a lot of resources in the bank either. But maybe so this is more of a all-in Ragnarok. Going to be going for the uh, market as well, which is huge. Maybe try and cut gold, but check out the uh, economy of squash here. He's sitting at a very low amount of gold here. So if he does pick off maybe this town center or this market or this here, we do have a bunch of Arcus here as well. That's not even that many. It's just way too many heroes of Ragnarok to just take down this location. Shockwave is coming down over here. You see Bellerophon. Fox has got some units. We've got Heliopoli as well. It's like the uh, Bellerophon does manage to pick off that son of Cyrus. Nice job there. Good micro. I just going to take that one down, and now the Heliopoli are going to be enough to take down this town. So for some reason, Joe just really low on the gold. Huge raid yet again coming in with these camera. We're going to pick up a bunch of gold lions, villagers. Really, really hurting him right here. If you can actually pick off a couple here. The uh, camera is gigantic at this point. We're seeing Joe go for this town. So now a little bit of change of fronts. Force, uh, force F2 to push through DRD's forward base here while then we switch fronts and then start killing off what Squash has got and just slowly but surely just kill off all of the units. We're seeing uh, Shelty maybe throwing away a little bit too many heroes here. Maybe just uh, focus on taking down the town center and pushing the army away or something like that. Uh, would be really good. We do see Fox and Dark advance to the Mythic Age through Helios. He's going to be able to do some of that teleport action that we love to see. And we are moving forward even better at this point. Uh, looks like yeah, maybe this is going to be able to get held as well. As soon as Joe gets this town, this town center, he's going to have even more. We're seeing uh, chaos does come down onto this fire giant here, but there, there was a frost giant which could counter that, but not with the special. Looks like Squash is trying to trying to keep this town center up, but. Uh, that's going to be enough to see uh, Joe say bye bye lion like he just picked up all of those villages and then just left and he's like look at all of this villager kill I can't keep up with Joe's raids here it's absolutely bonkers now we're seeing a, uh, a vortex into the base of gold of, uh, of squash here from fox you can grab this back town center gold lion hits pause for some reason but that's uh, that's not gonna that's not gonna do it here you see an underworld passage does come down. Where does that one go? Looking like the Underworld Passage is coming into Fox. Fox did use his, um, his what do you call it, Vortex, so he cannot move to save himself here. So this is going to have to be Joe's responsibility to stop this one. We do see villagers jumping onto this town center. So player's going to be in a good position here. He's got a, a lot of Myrmidon, which are going to completely hard counter these champion cavalry. We do see some mercenary cavalry getting produced from this town center. Actually, this town center is closer, man. <laughs> but that's okay. Going to be trying to slow this one down. We've got Heliopoli moving on over to this fortified town center. But there are villages already over here as well as cavalry. We should be able to pick off these guys, which is going to be good. Town center was picked off as well by the catapult here. But some of those mountain giants to help defend. It's like a vortex is incoming as well from Fox to leave that location. Looking like he's coming back home. Got some of those catapults to pick off this town center as well. Got a uh, mummy in here as well. All these arc is going to be a good... Uh, a good use to make up these uh, catapult. He looks like he's focusing down the Odysseus, though, in order to try and save that Hecka Gigantes. 
Or is it Gigantes? How do you say that? How do you say that indeed? With the, uh, that, that brutal mission right there, it does look like it's going to be a big, uh, a big mission to uh, actually kill here. So a lot of villagers repairing this, and even with all these catapults, it does need to get engineers or something and just get that extra damage to come down and, and, and do all the good stuff. It's looking like the town center. It's going to be fairly close to uh, to dying. No more catapult coming in, and even having some of those medium axemen to help out against those Myrmidon. Uh, it's one of the few units that I think Myrmidon don't have a don't have a, a bonus against. Yeah, no axemen or throwing axemen bonus. Um, it's one of those few things that most people don't realize, but. Yeah, they don't have a bonus against the, their county unit, so there is a way to count them as Egyptian. We do manage to take down that town center, and then we're going to be moving on to the uh, the underworld passage to slow this one down. But yeah, it does lose the town center, but Gold Lion does reclaim his hometown center here. Uh, and he does have those mound giants that did spawn, so we can actually move out and try and push and punish this one here. It looks like the attack that was happening over here has been thwarted and now villages are constantly getting reproduced now for Sheltie. Uh, does he have market up? Somewhere he's got some idle idle units here. It's really easy. You just have to shift click idle military and then all your all your Dragon Rocks move. It's very, very important. Heliopoli are also getting picked off and now Town Center's gonna be able to get back up. Fox is gonna be in a good position to continue here. But Swash and Player, their still economy is still sitting fairly decently. If you check out the uh, upgrades, it's actually not as good as you think, but it does have Champion Arcus, so that's useful right there. Villagers here for Joe do get spotted and they're getting pushed back. Let's send those medium off sucks out for Sheltie. He should start probably start transitioning into something that's a little bit more useful here. <laughs> to say the very least. Uh, but a little bit of a slow point right now. I've got the, uh, got the, uh, got the Zeus player. Uh, running in onto Joe's town center here, trying to spam out those mercenaries, but they do spam very, very slowly. If you check out his economy, he does have quite a few, uh, quite a lot of gold in the bank, and he's trying to pick up back the losses as fast as he possibly can. Um, I'm not sure which unit you actually want to be picking up, but you see Hell has come through here, but there are a bunch of uh, chariot archers here that can attack this Nidhogg. Nidhogg does die very, very fast to all of this action that's going underneath it. And the army of gold line is really not that strong. We even have Pharaoh in the back here. I would pick this Nidhogg up, and the Nidhogg dies so quickly. Unfortunately for gold line, really not using that Nidhogg well at all. That is it. And it looks like Town Center is still going to be able to stay up. Has Mud Brick, has Architects, uh, and he's got units over here as well. We are seeing uh, Shelty putting more pressure on to squash. Uh, there's really not a lot he can attack, though. He needs to kind of get some. Uh, so maybe some baluster up, get some fire giants out, you know, fire giant baluster combo. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, fire siphon, trying to pick off these Heliopoli. But the, uh, the Fox Arcus as well. Doing good stuff. Feels good, man. Feels good. Pick those fire giant picking off things as well. Ooh, going for the raids yet again. Joey's really onto this in this game. He's going to be finding something here. There's some gold miners at the back here that he can run into. He can separate the uh, the chariot archers and attack multiple different things at once. Seeing uh, watchtowers going up here for Squash, but Squash is in a really good predicament here. He's only got two town centers, and he's got a lot of economy. So he doesn't. He can't really build the economy units. Um, sorry, he can't really build the military units. But he can't really delete the economy units because he needs them to function. He can't really produce these units either. Like, to check out his economy right now, it's 124 of 140, and he doesn't have a lot of resources in the bank, so he can't really afford to pull that much. And they're all dying very, very fast. And these five guys are just sieging down this location very, very well. And we're seeing some raiding cavalry out here, and these chariot archers are just going to sit. Sit on the code out, pick off a bunch of that, and then really slow down what these players have got, or what F2 has got here. I like it. I like it very, very much. And we do see F2 player decides to tap out as Joe begins researching the time gate. Squash taps out and Gold Lion taps out. GG. Well played there by DoD. I thought they were gonna, gonna they were having a bit of issues over here with Shelty, but Shelty managed to just tread that line of defense and tech. 
Managed to get to the Hero to Myth Gauge through Ragnarok, and then that Ragnarok really did the pain. And the fact that uh, Joe just didn't get touched, as you can see, Joe didn't get touched, 8,000 score, 2,000 ahead, or 1,000 ahead of player, just because he didn't get touched. It's one of those things that's just, Ra is very good if, if he uh, is let to be good. If he doesn't get let to be God, good, then it's um, it doesn't go so well. Anyways, uh, super fun game right there. We'll see if they want to play another one. Hopefully they do. Uh, stick with me and we'll find one more game before we wrap up tonight.